August 24th. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. John 17, 19. Christ is glorified in the progressive holiness of his people. The kingdom of God is within you, says our Lord. The increase of this kingdom is just the measure and extent of the believer's advance in sanctification. This is that internal righteousness, the work of the Holy Spirit, which consists in the subjugation of the mind, the will, the affections, the desires, yes, the whole soul, to the government and supremacy of Jesus. Bringing into captivity, says the apostle, every thought to the obedience of Christ. O oh, you who are striving against sin, longing to be conformed to the image of God's Son, panting to be more pure in heart, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Think that in every step which you take in the path of holiness, in every corruption subdued, in every besetting sin laid aside, in every holy desire begotten, Christ is glorified in you. But perhaps you re reply, but you perhaps reply, the more I strive for the mastery, the more I seem to be conquered, the stronger I oppose my sins, the stronger my sins seem to be. But what does this prove? It proves that God is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, that the kingdom of God is invading the kingdom of Satan, that the spirit dwelling in the heart is warring with the flesh. It is truly remarked by Owen that if a believer lets his sin alone, his sins will let him alone. But let him search them as with candles. Let him bring them to the light, oppose, mortify, and crucify them. They will to the last struggle for the victory. And this inward warfare undeniably marks the inhabitation of God, the Holy Spirit, in the soul. To see one advancing in holiness, thirsting for God, the heart fixed in its solemn purpose of entire surrender, cultivating higher views and aiming for a loftier standard, to behold him, perhaps carving his way to his throne through mighty opposition, fightings without, fears within, striving for the mastery of some besetting sin, sometimes foiling and sometimes foiled, sometimes with the shout of victory on the lip, and sometimes with the painful consciousness of defeat bowing down the heart. Yet still onward, the needle of the soul was slow and tremulous, but true and certain movement still pointing to its glorious attraction, God. Faith that can never fail, and hope that can never die, and love that can never be quenched, hanging amid their warfare and in all their weakness upon the nail fastened in a sure place. How is Christ our sanctification glorified in such a, such a saint? How is Christ our sanctification glorified in such a saint? Oh, to be like Jesus, meek and lowly, gentle, kind and forgiving, without duplicity, without deceit, without malice, without revenge, without one temper or thought or feeling or look that is unlike him. Beloved, mistake not the nature and the evidence of growth in sanctification. In all your self-denial in this great work, be cautious of grace denial. You will need much holy wisdom here, lest you overlook the work of the Spirit within you. You have thought, it may be, of, of the glory that Christ receives from brilliant genius and profound talent, from splendid gifts and glowing zeal, from costly sacrifices and even extensive usefulness. But have you ever thought of the glory 
the far greater, richer glory that flows to him from a contrite spirit, a broken heart, a lowly mind, a humble walk, from the tear of godly repentance that falls when seen by no human eye, and the sigh of godly sorrow that is breathed when heard by no human ear, from the sin abhorrence and self-loathing, the deep sense of vileness, poverty, and infirmity that takes you to Jesus with the prayer, Lord, here I am. I have brought to you my rebellious will, my wandering heart, my worldly affections, my peculiar infirmity, my besetting and constantly overpowering sin. Receive me graciously. Put forth the mighty power of your grace in my soul. Subdue all, rule all, and subjugate all to yourself. Will it not be for your glory, the glory of your great name, if this strong corruption were subdued by your grace, if this powerful sin were nailed to your cross, if this temper so sensitive, this heart so impure, these affections so truant, this mind so dark, these desires so earthly, these pursuits so carnal, and these aims so selfish, were all entirely renewed by your spirit, sanctified by your grace, and made each to reflect your image? Yes, Lord, it will be for your glory through time and through eternity.